You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. A Shirley man has been indicted for a stabbing at a popular Long Island amusement park, but the defense claims video of the incident will clear him of the charges. Virginia Huey has the story you'll see only in Newsday. His wife and child and himself were all threatened and, and they were concerned about their lives. Defense attorney Michael Brown says Daniel Tomaski feared for his life and was trying to protect his family during a fight at Adventureland that left a man with a critical stab wound. 42-year-old Tomaski of Shirley pleaded not guilty at his arraignment in Riverhead Criminal Court. The top charges he's facing are first-degree assault with intent to cause serious injury, second-degree assault, and criminal possession of a weapon. Prosecutors say Tomaski stabbed 47-year-old James Burns of Edgewater, Florida in the abdomen with a knife after a dispute between a group of adults and Tomaski's wife on July 7th at Adventureland. It is clear that they were the aggressors. But Brown says security camera video from the amusement park shows Tomaski acted in self-defense. If you look at the video, he did his best to usher his wife and son out of that environment. But it was a mob mentality. They surrounded him. Uh, you had four or five or six adults large adults surrounding my client and his wife and his child. These were folks who were ready, willing and able to cause injury and it's clear from the video. Uh, one of the gentlemen actually knocked my client unconscious, laid him out on the floor twice. Prosecutors argued that according to the video footage, Tomaski tried to obstruct the investigation by dumping the knife into a sewer after the fight. According to court documents, Tomaski and Burns knew each other. Tomaski and his wife, who stood by his attorney outside the courtroom, declined to say how they knew Burns or answer other questions. What was the dispute about? Uh, they, you'd have to ask them. We have no idea. The judge issued orders of protection for Burns and two unnamed minors. As for Tomaski, he's out on a $100,000 bond and he's due back in court on September 3rd. For Newsday TV, I'm Virginia Huey. One of the island's most famous restaurants is closed, but fans of the Miller Ridge Inn should not panic because it's only temporary. The owner says the Jericho landmark is being updated. The work should be done by September 10th. The Miller Ridge Inn's history dates back to the 1600s. It's one of the oldest operated restaurants in America. And workers are bracing for layoffs at one of the island's biggest companies. Henry Schein just announced a restructuring plan that's supposed to save the company as much as $100 million a year. Now, it's not clear yet how many jobs are at stake. The Melville-based medical equipment distributor has nearly 1,500 sure, local employees. And Breeze Airways is adding a new route at the MacArthur Airport. Starting in late November, the airline will start flying nonstop to Sarasota, Florida, twice a week. Breeze already runs flights to other parts of Florida, as well as year-round routes to South Carolina and Virginia. And Jake's 58 is a popular destination for lots of Long Island gamblers, but now the casino has been hit with two dozen violations from the state. Drew Scott has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Every day, hundreds of Long Islanders get off exit 58 on the Long Island Expressway to visit Jake's 58 Casino in Islandia. People like retiree Marty Raber. Yes, it's a senior citizen's headquarters. But according to records obtained by Newsday through a Freedom of Information request, Jake's is the first and only casino in New York to be slapped with 26 violations, allegedly employing people without the proper gaming license, including top political appointees. OTB has long been a pension mill, uh, and there are others, uh, and all political parties participate uh, in that fiasco. It's uh, costing the taxpayers a lot of money. Some political appointees named by the Gaming Commission as not being licensed or holding an improper gaming license were Anthony Portesi, Brookhaven Town Democratic Chairman, Republican Anthony Pensella, OTB's former CEO, and James LaCaruba, OTB Vice President. The OTB President, Phil Boyle, says the error is being corrected after the purchase of Jake's 58 from Delaware North to OTB. 
We believe a lot of our uh, people did not have license, did not need licenses, and others uh, that have licenses uh, were told they had licenses, and they found out from the Gaming Commission that they needed a different level. Uh, it's going to be resolved. We're working on it. But Fitzpatrick believes Suffolk OTB, which is a public benefit corporation, shouldn't be in the casino business. Will continue to be a patronage mill, and he worries about the long-term effects of gambling on the public. It will lead to more. Suffolk County and other residents falling into the trap of addiction. Jake's 58 is appealing the 26 violations and the State Gaming Commission says it's holding off on the fines until the matter can be settled. In the village of Islandia, Drew Scott, Newsday TV. Now the people named in our story gave us these responses. Portizi says he received a temporary license in 2021. La Carumba says he thought he had the proper license. And Pencella claims it was an administrative problem that's being corrected. Let's read more about the violations. Go to Newsday.com. Click Get More on well, the Newsday TV video box. Looking for a day trip not too far from home? Well, just hop on the ferry and head to Shelter Island. Here's the latest chapter in the adventures of Scott Vogel. Just a few minutes from both the North and South Forks, Shelter Island somehow manages to be a fork all its own, an East Fork, if you will. Its special vibe draws inspiration from both North and South sensibilities. So you can take the ferry from Greenport, which is, I'm oversimplifying here, but it's sort of this no frills, unpretentious fishing village. Or you can take the ferry from the Hamptons, which is this trendy, glitzy, wealthy enclave. You can take the ferry from here too. And part of the fun of a trip there comes in toggling back and forth between the two, uh. which left my niece with just one question. Wait, but what do we wear? Greenport is all simplicity and unfussiness. So too is the Shelter Island Heights Pharmacy, where they've been serving breakfast at the lunch counter for over a hundred years. And they have this really fantastic high-end shopping. Uh, wait, Scott, you can't go dress like that. It's true, on Shelter Island, you could spend hours shopping at high-end boutiques, and then in the next breath, visit a farmer's market or a local taco stand to get provisions for a thrilling trip by a kayak to tiny Taylor's Island just offshore. Can we get a drink before kayaking? We have to change first. Row, 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 row your, your boat. boat. Elegantly restored just a few years back, the Pridwin Hotel has a fresh and comfortable interior and a terrace bar that's just perfect for people watching. Okay, that's enough stalling, time for kayaking. The trip through Coakley's Harbor takes less than an hour, especially if your photographer paddles too. And if you play your cards right, you might just have every inch of the acre and a half tailors to yourself. Let's see what's next. Glamour of Thy Name is Sunset Beach, in which a Hamptons-esque crowd flocks to a French Riviera-esque hotspot across the street from Shelter Island's terrific Crescent Beach. How about a little billiards before dinner? <laughs> that would be at the Chiquite Inn, a Victorian jewel that dates back to 1872. Can we go to dinner now? What do we wear? <laughs> I don't care. And the truth is, it really doesn't matter. Or at least it doesn't matter when you're not far from the last hole of the Shelter Island Country Club, home to the recently reimagined 1901 Grill. It's the only place where both ferries meet, at least on the menu. And even the most committed Green Porter or Hamptonite will find something to love. Shelter Island provides shelter for all. The laid back and chic, the rich and the not so rich, the trendy and retro, the niece, and the uncle. Maybe next time we should bring more clothes. Yeah, true. Uh. <laughs> now for more adventures of Scott Vogel, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, pull the Newsday TV video box.
Now let's take a look at your Long Island weather and the rain is still here, but it will give up soon. I promise. Take a look. You see we have showers late tonight, but look at those temps near the low 60s. Tomorrow we have showers too, but again, those temps are a lot lower than what we're used to in the last couple of weeks. We're in the 70s, showers all day. But look at the seven day forecast. There is sun there, right there on Sunday, and it just creeps into the weekend and won't be there all day Saturday. Long Island weather is brought to you by Sun Nation Energy, helping Long Islanders save on their energy bills for over 20 years. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.